Hi friends! Today we will learn more about sound. So let's get started. Sound. As sound gives us information about our environment. Sound helps us to give instruction. We can call out for help in danger. We can converse with our near and dear ones. Sound is a very important part of our life. Now, let's learn how do sound waves travel or the transmission of sound. Every sound is produced by some vibration and vibration is a back and forth movement of some object like the back and forth movement of our vocal cords when we speak, back and forth movement of the string of guitar, etc. So, sound is a vibration or it's a result of some vibration. Now we have to see how does the sound produced by any vibration reaches our ears or how does sound travel? Sound travels in the form of waves, and there are two types of waves, transverse waves, longitudinal waves. Longitudinal waves. In longitudinal waves, vibrations moves parallel to the direction of the wave. Here, the particles move side to side. Here you see the movement of slinky. Here the movement of wave in the slinky is an example of longitudinal waves. Next is the transverse wave. Here the vibration travels perpendicular to the movement of the wave or the particles move up and down and it resembles the waves in the sea. Sound waves travels as longitudinal waves in air and water. And in solids, sound can travel both as longitudinal as well as transverse wave. Now we will learn part of different types of waves. Parts of longitudinal waves, parts of transverse waves. Let's first learn the parts of a transverse wave. First is the resting point. It is the line that runs in the middle of the wave. It divides the wave into two equal halves. Next part of the wave are crests and troughs. Troughs is the lowest point in a wave. Crest is the highest point in a wave. In this wave, we have three crests and three troughs. Next is the wavelength of a transverse wave. It is the measurement of distance between two crests or two troughs. Like this, that is between two points, this is one wavelength. You can also measure it here, that is between two troughs. Wavelength. It is the distance between, covered by one consecutive crest and trough. Next is the amplitude of a transverse wave. It's same as the height of the wave. And in order to measure height of the wave, we measure the length from the resting line to the top of the crest, or other way is to measure the amplitude is to measure the distance between the resting line to the bottom of the trough, both are correct. Now next, learn what is the frequency of the wave. It's the number of wavelengths produced in a given amount of time. Now let's learn it with an example. Let's see two different transverse waves produced in one second. Here we have two transverse waves produced in one second. In first wave, only two waves are there. 
And in the second wave, we can see there are many wavelengths. Let's count. Here we have five wavelengths produced in one second. So first one has lower frequency. Then the second one has more frequency. That is, more number of wavelengths are produced in one second. And we know what's a wavelength. It's a distance between two consecutive crusts or two consecutive troughs, or the distance between covered by one crust and one trough. So, the wave which has visibly more number of crusts and troughs has more frequency. So we have learned parts of transverse waves. Now let's learn the parts of the longitudinal wave. And in case of the longitudinal wave, particles travel side to side in the direction of the wave. Let's first learn what is compression in case of longitudinal waves. Compression is that part of the wave where particles are crowded together or very close to each other. Like in this wave, you can see at three places there are particles gathered together, so there are three compression in this wave. Next is what is rarefraction. It's the places in the wave where particles are not close to each other. They are at more distances than compression. So, you can clearly see in this wave there are three rarefaction in this wave. Next is wavelength in longitudinal wave. Like we learn in case of transverse wave, wavelength is a distance between two consecutive troughs or crests. Similarly, in longitudinal waves, wavelength is a distance between two consecutive rarefaction or two consecutive compression. So kids, Today we learn longitudinal and transverse waves, and also their different parts. Now you may go ahead and take a quiz to learn more. Bye-bye! Tootway has thousands of animated videos on math, English, and science to clear the core basics of these subjects.